We found this guy. He's as dialed in as anybody at the University of Michigan. He's the host of the Michigan Insider on WTKA. You can hear him daily. And, of course, watch his uh, Twitter feed 24-7. He's got all kinds of great material out there. The great Sam Webb joining us now on the bottom line. Sam, how you doing, my friend? Thanks for the time. Man, I'm doing terrible with this Uh-oh. green background. Normally, normally I can take it and I can have like a virtual background, but you guys, you know, ruining my rep with all this green behind me. But I, I do it from man Braylon, man. So I've been waiting for an opportunity to come on and be on this show. So I'm excited about it. Yeah, I was glad to have you, man. Obviously, we, I did uh, Sam's show back in December. Sam, uh, Sam and Tim McCormick, we had a really good time talking and catching up. And then we realized that one of Sam's first interviews, man, was at a Denny's. With, with yours truly, I, oh, I actually, man. I don't even, I don't even think, I think the number eighty had just come off my back <laughs> when I was sitting down in this booth to do this interview. I had just got number one, and Sam we sat down, so it was a good time. Always good to have you on, Sam. Man, that's twenty years ago. That's right. It was, it was Damn. Braylon and it his dad's band at the, at the Denny's over there right. on Washington. Man, that was, that was the first magazine feature I ever wrote. Unbelievable! Years ago. Crazy man, crazy. Isn't that uh, this, this business will take you take you to places? Where's the, where's the time you, though? <laughs> right, you, well, <laughs> you still look good. I still think you could play. I uh, Sam, that. Thank Sam you. before I get to the Gaddis, let me do this with you. Yeah. How would you characterize the last month of the Jim Harbaugh to the NFL saga? Now that he's back in Ann Arbor and will be for what yeah. he says a lifetime. January third to December second. Yeah, so yeah, personally, man, it was uh, it was a test of the marriage. I thought my wife was gonna leave me. I was spending all this time trying to keep up with it, but but for Michigan, I think it was uh, fan base, uh, the former player fraternity, like uh, the, the Braylon is in. I think you could sense a bit of, of frustration and, and angst. I, you know, I think that maybe there was a little bit of disappointment in some circles because here here Michigan was coming off a great season, a great season. And on the heels of that, Jim was looking at the NFL and said, I know you had some people feeling let down. My opinion was a little bit different because, A, Jim was up front about it. He was even telling recruits, I'm going to entertain the NFL. I, I And I guess I always was of the mind that he eventually was going to look again. I mean, you talk to college coaches and pro coaches, guys who have done both, and if they have their druthers, man, all things being equal, uh, you know, the majority of them would choose the pros. So I just, I figured he would always look this, the iron will never have been hotter or had never been hotter for him coming off a big season like he just came off of here in Michigan. So it just seemed like the time when it was going to happen. The reason why it took so long is because that's how it took, that's how long it took for the interest to really manifest from the NFL side of things. That's what I thought was most interesting is that for as much as his name was mentioned with this job and that job and this job and that job, this job and that job weren't really checking for him like that. You know, it, it really yeah. came down to the the opportunity with the Vikings that really made things seem like they were aligning at the very end, and it wound up not working out, and now he's back at Michigan. And here's the unique thing about Jim Harbaugh, guys. You know, whereas, a, a, you know, you or I, I don't know how you guys process disappointment. Me, it lingers in some aspects. I might Something might happen, and then I'm thinking about it for days and weeks and months, sometimes years on end. This dude is different in that he could have, hey, I tried that Vikings thing. It didn't work out. He could switch gears and be right back all in on Michigan and like it didn't happen. Now, that's not everybody else, but certainly Jim can do it that way, and that's what I sense going on. Talking to my man Sam Webb from the Michigan Insider. Sam, let me tell you like this. I, I don't have to say not biased because I'm never biased when it comes to Michigan. I say what I feel, whether it hurts people's feelings or not, I don't care. Let me just ask you this question from the standpoint of how he handled it. You see it, you said it took a while, because I agree with you on that. When they first talking about uh started talking about, hey, the Chicago job, hey, the Vegas job, I'm like, those guys aren't offering Jim Harbaugh. I said, there's nothing there. I didn't feel anything there like you said. So it did take a while. My thing was, I'm hearing conflicting reports coming from players, coming from administration that they didn't know. They didn't know that he was seriously thinking about taking his job. And so let's say that is the case. Um, is his, I guess, for lack of his not being forthright with the players, the coaches, on the, on the staff, 
Yeah, the guys that were coming in is very different than the guys that are already there. Does that have something to do with now your defensive coordinator, Mike McDonald's, back in uh, in, uh, in Baltimore? Now your guy, uh, <laughs> Josh Gaddis, now he leaves. You see some other coaches leave. You see some players hitting the portal. Do you think that's a direct, a direct reflection of Harbaugh and not necessarily being honest once December, uh, January 1st hit? So I guess, so two things. I, I, I think that there is a consequence to the dalliance, but I, I don't make the I don't make the nexus that that you just did be because he, here's what I see. I think Jim Harbaugh was upfront that he was considering the NFL. What he wasn't doing was giving daily updates to everyone like, hey, I'm talking to this team, or I'm trying to get in with that team, or this is what's going on. At the very beginning, he said, I'm gonna look at the NFL, and then he let that be that. It, you know, he did not give did not offer a blow by blow every single day about what's going on. I think that's how he handles things typically. Uh, it does not make for the most, uh, it does not make for the most uh, seamless environment uh, yeah. in terms of what you're gonna be doing day to day as an assistant coach or even as a as a player, it does leave you in, in limbo, so to speak. But I don't, I don't think he was dishonest. I think that, like I said, I think it was a process that was elongated by how long it took those those other teams to to uh, to show interest now as far as the you know the coaches and feelers from other things mike mcdonald had nothing to do with the the nfl downings mike mcdonald came down to what i talked about before all things being equal a coach that can coach in college and a coach that can coach in the pros will all will choose pros 90 yeah. percent of the time i think and that was the case for mike mcdonald here you got a, a coach who just came from the ravens who now you got to recruit every day and you know, you got this this grind, this longer grind probably than most uh, college programs have, and you have the opportunity to go back home to the Ravens and coach in the league for, for John Harbaugh. I mean, it was and probably a boost in pay. No-brainer for him. I think he's a pro coach. With Josh Gaddis, you know, I think, yeah, I think part of this is a consequence of, of Jim looking at the NFL, but not because he was upset that Jim was looking at the NFL. I think that what happened by Jim looking around, it was an opening. It was more of an opening and opportunity for other programs to kind of jump in. They kind of saw it as a vulnerability. Maybe they wouldn't have come as hard if they if they thought that there wasn't an opening, right? But there was, and Miami came really hard. I mean, like really, really hard, a huge offer, and ultimately one that was too big for him to, uh, to turn down. And so now he's off on his way to Miami. Uh, real quick, let me follow up with this. So Jim Harbaugh, and I've talked about this, Jim Harbaugh definitely gives the University of Michigan the best opportunity to win this next coming season and the season after that, especially after the year that he had last year, kind of putting it all together finally. I think he gives you the best opportunity. So while I didn't agree with you know, the things that he did, I 100% agree with the fact that he's the head coach. He should be the head coach. I'm just looking at things as it relates to the relationship with Harbaugh. Like, is there any cause for concern for future coaches coming in, for future players recruiting in 2023? When you see a guy before the season, uh, he gets his contract restructured, and he goes from $8 million to 4.3. Then it comes out he was pissed about that, and then he comes back. Then at the end, uh, once the season's over, once you hit January 3rd, now he goes and tries to kind of pursue the NFL. Something comes to the table. You think he's out of here. Gaddis might be thinking he's the next coach at Michigan, et cetera, et cetera. Doesn't happen. Now he comes back. Now he's talking to Ward's offers, and we get the, we get the Adam Schefter tweet. That basically says, you know, Jim Harbaugh called Ward and said, hey, look, uh, you know, th is the job still open? Uh, do you guys want to have me? It, it, does it just I'm, I'm just looking at it all play out and it just seems interesting. I'm like, is has Michigan put themselves in an interesting situation with Harbaugh that's, that's toxic for the future or can it be rectified or is that a loaded question? Yeah, I mean, I, I get no, it's a question that I think, uh, you know, I, I think a lot of people are, are asking. I, I think there are some people out there that wonder. Is there, is this a tale of woe, a sign of, of trouble? I think if you were playing poker, I think this is a poker game that was uh, a little bit in question. And then at the end of the day, if you're Michigan, you won. I don't think that, look, I don't think that this was a leverage play by Jim. I think that he meant, I think that he was looking to go to the NFL. I think yeah. if the Vikings had offered him that job, I think he would have took it. That's just my one hundred percent. One hundred percent. I agree, I agree you know, with you on that. That's I agree my with you opinion. on that. Yeah. Now that's my opinion. I'm, I want to qualify it as such. I think he would have taken it, but that it didn't happen that way, I don't think is a negative for Michigan. I don't think 
you got to look at it as a, as a consolation prize because I don't think that Jim Harbaugh looks at it that way. I think he looked at it as a win-win. Now, we're, here's where Michigan won. You don't have to worry about this dude looking at the NFL anymore. Here's why I say that. This was a, a, a cycle where you had multiple teams. With, you, you had the Bears with ties to them, right? You had the, the Raiders with ties to them. You had the, the Vikings with ties to them. You had, what, eight jobs open. And it really it was at the 23rd hour that an opportunity arose, and then it didn't happen. So now you have Jim Harbaugh saying, look, this will never happen again. He said it publicly. He said it privately. He can ill afford to go back on that work. Because one thing that Jim Harbaugh did, he didn't lie. He never lied. He never lied about his interest in the NFL. So if he were to go back now and look at the NFL, well, that would be a lie. He said he would never do it again. Now, that's, you say what you want about Jim Harbaugh. He has never proven himself to be a liar. I don't expect that to happen now. So you have you have seen the opportunities in the NFL be very slim. They're only going to get slimmer with age and with time. And then you also have him saying, I'm not going to even entertain it anymore right. on top of that, which adds to the likelihood that this NFL in, in endeavor or dalliance will never happen. Again. And uh, look, uh, we're 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 all in on this Michigan talk right now because it has been a fascinating yeah. last month, really a uh, fascinating weekend with Josh Gaddis texting the players, you know, uh, a goodbye and that he wasn't appreciated. Let's bring Sam Webb back in, host of the Michigan Insider on WTKA. You can listen to him there and, of course, on Twitter at Sam Webb 77 Sam, what did you make of the text? I did not like the text to the players, personally. I thought there was a little bit more of a, uh, uh, you can go out with a little bit more dignity than that. I don't know. I Braylon says I'm wrong. I've been wrong before, but I I did not like it. Yeah, so I think that, uh, I think, uh, and I know that if you ask Josh, he would say he regrets that. I know, you, I know he would. Be, not because he doesn't feel that way, but because it was an overshare. Like, you, you, you want to make sure that on your way out the door, and this is in any endeavor that you don't burn bridges, right? And I, I think that this was an instance where, you know, it was foreseeable that when you, when he sent it out to like 20, 25 players, there are 20, 25 guys on, on the team. Hey, if you guys have 20, 25 people in your life that you can send a message to that you know they wouldn't send it to anyone else, right? Yeah. In anything. So I uh, can't imagine that, that was the case on the team. You had to anticipate that getting out. And, and so you don't want, I mean, even if it's just selfish interest, you don't want that to affect your opportunities in the future. And so I think that for him, the issue becomes this perception that as he leaves places, he has negative things to say. Uh, you know, that was the that was the case coming from back. That was the case coming up from, from past stops. So that's not me uh, piling on Josh. This is this is something that, you know, I, we've had discussions about that it would be. You know, it would it would be something that that comes back on him if he were to, uh, you know, if it were to end ugly. And so I, I won't say that this was an acrimonious departure per se, but it was one that didn't have to be, didn't have to have the sort of messy uh, image that this now has. Because I you look, people make financial decisions all the time, guys. And this was at the end of the day. I think it was a financial decision for for, for Josh Gass. What did he mean by value me? Uh, you know, I think he saw Miami's offer to him as one that, you know, made them. It was a signal to him that they valued him more. I, you know, was that right? You know, right, wrong or indifferent. That's how he saw it. And so, hey, man, people don't understand you make a, a financial choice. Uh, unfortunately, you know, people take liberties when you make a when you send a message like that where I wasn't wanted. Now people start ascribing meaning to that beyond what it really was. I just told you what it was because he told me what it was. And and so this was a financial choice at the end of the day. Uh, he goes to a place in Miami that they're in the ACC. It's an easier league. He doesn't have some of the obstacles that you have to deal with. At a, at a, you don't have admissions obstacles. You don't have portal obstacles. You don't have. Um, you know, you don't have uh, some of the NIL obstacles that they've come across. So you can make a case that this would be still a step forward toward being a head coach. 
even if he doesn't have as much talent down there on that roster as he has yeah. in Michigan. But again, you get it. You get why. But you know, six hundred stacks, six hundred thousand stacks for a guy might want to might want to take that route. So that's what he did. God bless. <laughs> yeah, I I just don't I just don't like all the back and forth and all the differences. You have you know you have a bunch of players saying that they didn't know anything and they didn't find out the Harbaugh wanted to go into the NFL until Twitter happened uh, January fourth. And you got some players, uh, some coaches, and administration said they didn't know. You got some coaches saying they didn't know. Obviously, Gaddis is one of those individuals that didn't know. And if Harbaugh did say something to War Manual seven years or not, well, War wasn't here, but seven years ago, and then maybe he reminded War before the season. It's very different than telling the players and whatever. I just want everybody to get on the same page, which probably isn't going to happen. So, you know, hardball. Well, no, but, but Braylon, no, let, let's be, let me be clear. Look, it, it was never going to be the case that you could, that Jim could look at the NFL and there weren't going to be some people that were feeling a certain kind of way about it. You were, you were on a team. You were on a Michigan team. Right. And your coach stands in front of you and he wants you, he's talking to you about being all in, right? Right. Well, I mean, I, I'm sure that there are probably some guys that would look back at, a, at their coach who looks at the NFL and wonder if he's all in when he when he does it. And so that's not every guy. Right. It's maybe not even most guys. But it's enough to where when you come back, you do have to address that. And the same thing with your coaches who are good. They're in limbo. You know, they're, as you go through that, as you're looking at the league, their futures are uncertain. So there is there's some smoothing over to do when that when that happens and in this case i think it comes down to the extensions in the case of of josh gaddis again i think that i think he looked at how coordinators were the defensive coordinators were paid uh before him both guys both previous defensive coordinators prior defense defensive coordinators were paid more than him i think he mike mcdonald didn't have any experience as a coordinator and comes in and makes more than gaddis year one yeah but he but he came from the pros he came from the ravens and that was he was unproven so, though he wasn't a defensive coordinator he was unproven you're right that's true but think about the think about the circumstances that were at play when he came you had jim harbaugh clearly in a make or break year it's hard to get guys to come work for you in that situation right. be so i mean you're gonna have to maybe put a little more on the table and you're right and you're getting him to come from the pros i mean man you can't just put down a regular offer you got to put down a hardcore offer to get a guy like that to come your way. So you, you understand why those guys were making what they were making. I think what Josh was hoping for is that on the heels of that season, that okay, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get my bread up like that too. Well, when the offer came around, it, it wasn't on par with what, what Miami's was. Now, me, if it's me, I'm going to the negotiation table and I'm putting that number on the on the on the table and saying this is what they're offering me. Josh didn't do that. That's like he's he's not a leverage guy. He's not right. trying to strong arm people. And so I think he for him it was a he he weighed the principle. Okay, how much do you want me? Let me see what you put on the table and this tells me how much you, you want me. I right. you know, I think Michigan was they were betting blind, right? They didn't know what they were betting against. And you have a you have a situation where you're trying to give a lot of guys raises. I'm not saying that they couldn't have given Josh more. I'm just saying, hey, how much more did they know they need to give him? I, that wasn't on the table. At the end of the day, though, what it boils down to is this. He has a great opportunity in, in front of him. Yeah. You understand why he would take it. I think from Michigan's perspective, I think that I think that Jim likes where Sharon, where Sharon Moore is and is, is going to be. I think he was looking to – have Matt Weiss maybe be the successor to Josh anyway as mm -hmm. time went on because he was telling recruits, look, Josh isn't going to be here this long, that long. Just in the same breath, the same re uh, receiver room that he was in, he was in Darius Clemens's in-home, you know, top 247 receiver. He told Darius Clemens, his dad, his pastor, he said, I'm going to entertain the NFL. That was in December. He said that. In the next breath, he told him, hey, Josh Gaddis might not be around here long. He's going to be a head coach. You got to make this decision be one that you weigh Michigan. You got to weigh everything because I don't know what's going to happen in the future. And so the dad was like, man, I appreciate that. He was being very, very honest with us about his future. He was being honest with us about the offensive coordinator and receiver coach's future. Yeah. And that kid wound up coming to Michigan. So I think all along Jim has sort of had in his mind, okay, I got to be thinking about who I'm going to move up. That's Matt Weiss. That's uh, that's Sharon Moore. I think that's going to be your play calling dynamic moving forward. And it just happened to be a, maybe a year or two sooner 
than he planned because Josh is on his way to Miami. I, I tell you what, they're playing a dangerous game in Ann Arbor, I tell you that. You've reached into the video. You know what you should do? Press like. You know you like the content that we have here at Wilbur Sports Network. I'm Braylon Networks from the bottom line. Subscribe to us right now.